Okay, we're going to look at explore number four uh, under mechanisms for evolution. And today we're going to be talking about the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. So let's start by drawing out our template for our notes. Go ahead and put your date, your reference. And let's go ahead and just nab that essential question. How can the changes in allele frequency within a population be measured? And then hit pause and tell me what you know or tell me what you think. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start uh, with Roman numeral one. Uh, we've been talking about evolution. We've talked about evidence for evolution. Uh, we've been talking about the mechanism for evolution. Um, Evolution is simply, uh, when you really get down to it, uh, yes, we can say that a, uh, an organism changes um, its phenotype, its physical features or behaviors, it can change. Uh, but really, this comes down to the genes, right? The genetics of that organism. Uh, there's a mutation. Uh, that mutation confers some kind of fitness and adaptation but it's it's a genetic change at the core and so you could really say that evolution then is a change in a population's gene pool over time remember a whole population changes and you see a particular um, gene a particular allele gain dominance right it becomes dominant through the gen uh, population you see everybody have it or the majority have it so um Hence, you could even think, uh, you could take this one step further then and say mathematically, then the population uh, could be called a unit of population, right? And um, let's just see here. Uh, this is all coming from here in your first paragraph there, okay? So, uh, and that's wrong. It should say unit of evolution. I'm sorry about that. So let's just go ahead and correct that right now. I was paused because it sounded wrong. Not a unit of evolution. Okay, we're just going to make that correction right now. Okay, so population can therefore be considered a unit of evolution. All right, so Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. This is a principle that can be used as a baseline. This is, we're pulling this straight from your text, uh, against which uh, changes in allele frequencies among a population can be measured. Um, for example, uh, the gene for the color of your eyes. Maybe uh, your mom has the dominant uh, allele the gene version for brown eyes, and maybe the dad has the recessive uh, version of that gene, the recessive allele, uh, for blue eyes. And uh, if you recall, in genetics, oftentimes we'll use a capital letter to refer to the dominant version, and we'll use a lowercase letter for the recessive. So um, the percentage uh, the percentages, how much, how many people uh, in a population have that dominant allele or that recessive allele, that's what we're talking about here when we say allele frequencies among a population. Okay, so uh, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, it states that in the absence of disturbing factors, and we got these factors down here, we'll look at those. In the absence of those disturbing factors, different genotype frequencies in a population will reach an equilibrium and will remain stable over generations. So if nothing disturbs um, a population and you don't have any need to evolve, then you're not going to have any change in the allele frequency. They'll be stable over time. Does that really happen? Not really. Um, all populations in nature uh, are under uh, pressure, environmental pressures, and are therefore constantly evolving. We should expect evolution to be occurring in populations all the time. Um, so, 
this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium really uh, describes an ideal situation where, um, and uh, it defines what the disturbing factors are that could um, upset that ideal. Mutations could distur be a disturbing factor. Selection, right, either natural or sexual selection. Uh, migration, what we call immigration or emigration. Uh, genetic drift, uh, whether it be something like a founder's effect or a bottlenecking. Um, and then environmental change. These are all disturbing factors that um, could upset the equilibrium and uh, lead to evolution. Okay, a lot of stuff we're saying here, a lot of stuff that it takes time to wrap your head around these concepts for sure. Uh, you'll definitely want to read the text and be looking at the videos. So I took a moment just to remind ourselves what alleles are. If allele frequencies change, then the population is not an equilibrium. So here we have an example of a chromosome. Remember, we have 23 pairs, so this is a pair of chromosomes, just an example. And we have the maternal contribution and the paternal contribution, the mom and the dad, right? And we're saying that on this chromosome with many genes, this protect, particular gene here, mom and dad have two different versions for eye color. Mom has, we've denoted it as capital B, that's for the brown eyes, and dad has the little b, representing the blue eye, the recessive. Okay, so here on the right, we just said genes of eye color. There are two versions, what we call alleles. The mom carries the dominant allele, right? Capital B or big B, that's for brown eyes. And dad carries the recessive allele, the recessive version, little b for blue eyes. Okay, so anyway, that's what your alleles are, just a little crash course there, okay? So, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is possible only for an idealized population that satisfies the following assumptions. So again, we're saying that there'd be no, uh, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the idea that a population will not change. There's no evolution. It's stable. The allele frequency will not change. Well, you have to have no mutations. You have to have no migration in or out of the population. You have to have an infinitely large population size um, because if you have small population sizes, uh, you increase the chances of um, of allele frequency changing. You have to have no natural selection, no sexual selection. Organisms have to be diploid and um, allele frequencies are equal in both sexes. It's a hard list to, uh, to satisfy. And uh, that's why um, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is really like a, an ideal case uh, that we can use to determine if a population is in fact evolving. And we can use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to actually make predictions about populations. So what is the formula? What is the equation? Well, for a population equilibrium, you have p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to 1, or basically equal to 100%. It all has to add up to 1. Okay. In this uh, equation, the P represents the dominant allele. In our example, that would be the big B. The Q uh, represents the frequency of the recessive allele. In our example, that would be the little b. And the PQ is the, um, the frequency of heterozygous um, combinations or heterozygous genotypes that is you a uh, capital b little b or a little b capital b right you could have two different ways um, that that would come out and that's why we have number two pq okay and where are we in here we are um right over here okay we're looking at the equation right now 
and they go ahead and just kind of describe what we just said and they provide you with a sample problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to write out the sample problem here in the notes uh, because you have it already in the text, but we'll kind of walk through it really quickly, okay? Uh, the allele frequencies in one generation of a population are, let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay, there we go. Make that just a little bit easier to read. All right, here we go. So the allele frequencies in one generation of a population are um, dominant R, capital R, 65%. So the population has 65% of the big R, and the population has 35% of the little r, the recessive. Okay, Those, of course, should add up to 100, and they do. Right? Predict the probability of the possible genotypes. Remember, there's three possibilities. You can have homozygous dominant, big R, big R. You can have homozygous recessive, little r, little r. Right. And then the third type you can have is a heterozygous combination where you have the dominant and the recessive gene paired, big R, little r. Okay. So use the equation. Uh, to use it, you just basically plug those percentages in. So where uh, big R equals 65, you know that the P was your dominant allele. So P squared is going to be the... Um, 0.65, that's 65%, squared. And that's going to give you 0.42, or we could say 42%. Okay? Um, so 42% of the population will have um, a big R, big R. Okay? Uh, the 2PQ is 2 times the frequency of the dominant times the frequency of the recessive. Well, the dominant was 0.65, and the recessive was 0.35. Uh, so 2 times 0.65 times 0.35 equals 0.46, or 46%. 46 percent. 46 of your population will be heterozygous. Okay, And then finally, um, Q squared. Q squared is the uh, recessive gene, and that recessive um, allele occurred 35% of the time. So what are the chances that you would get um, a homozygous recessive? We plug in that 0.35, right? That's 35% squared, and that would give you 0.12 or 12%. So 12% of your population will have a homozygous um, recessive combination there. When you add them all up, 42 plus 46 plus 12, that's going to equal 100% or 1. Okay, uh, so uh, that's kind of how you use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation uh, to actually, uh, if you're given, in this case, if you're given the allele frequencies, then you can figure out, you can predict um, what the percentages will be for all the genotype combinations. Big R, big R, little r, little r, and a big R, little r. All right, uh, hopefully that's helpful, and um, go ahead and take a moment and write your summary paragraph. All right, bye-bye.